Hello, my name is Crystal Foster and I'm a traveling makeup artist. I specialize in television and media and my object today is a makeup brush. Can you describe your object? My object today is a makeup brush. It's a powder brush and um, it's sentimental to me because um, when I started my career in makeup over 20 years ago, my first major job was with um, music television, MTV. Um, it's housed under a company called Viacom, which also owns uh, BET, VH1, Nickelodeon. So it was a pretty big deal. So when I arrived on the set with my old makeup brushes, um, one of the makeup artists felt bad and she offered me her very expensive Bobbi Brown brush. And what makes this brush so special, not that, that she just gave it to me, but it's squirrel hair, it's very expensive. And I mean, it's 20 years old and look, it's still like, it's not shedding or anything. So I blinged it out and I keep it in my kit as a reminder that I've come a long way because now I have a whole set of beautiful brushes. Why did you decide to enter this industry? I've always been fascinated with makeup. Um, since I was a little girl, I used to play in my mother's makeup. It would frustrate her because I would be you know, ruining her makeup, but she saw that I had a liking for it. I would be mesmerized by watching her get ready to go out and tr the transformation just was intriguing to me um, as a little girl. So she started buying me Barbies and Barbie dolls and I would cut their nails, cut their hair. And there was this head and shoulder Barbie. I forgot what it's called, but you could do their makeup. So I transformed that Barbie doll over and over again. I think she probably bought me at least three different ones because I would cut the hair off and, you know, ruin it <laughs> trying to learn. But I've always had a liking for it. What does a typical workday look like for you? My typical work day varies. Sometimes um, it's hectic. I feel like I'm always chasing the clock because I'm scheduled, everything is scheduled. Um, so it starts in the morning with me checking my schedule, seeing what I have to do today, making a list of things to do for the day. Um, it usually involves showing up on a job, making sure I'm on time. The night before is prep work to make sure I have everything prepared and ready for that job. But starting the day usually starts with a little exercise, a little meditation, a healthy breakfast, and off to my day. How does this vary if you're on set or have to prep a client for a red carpet? Getting a client ready for the red carpet is very detailed. You have to, um, it's not just makeup, you have to partner up with the hairstylist as well as the stylist that's styling them. So you want the makeup to reflect their hair and what they're wearing on the red carpet. So there's a lot of prep work involved. You find out, um, does she want a natural look? Does she want a glamour look? Or does she want um, something outlandish? It varies. Consultation is very important. The consultation usually takes place with the producer of the show. She'll give me direction. So um, she's wearing Calvin Klein on the red carpet and her dress is red. So we would like something. She wants a red lip and a black smoky eye or she wants a nude eye and a bright red lip or um, there's usually direction. And then sometimes, you know, the creative side is left up to me, which I love. How does your object aid in the day-to-day -day task of your industry? My object aids in my day-to-day -day task because without a brush, there's no artistry. So it's very important that you have a good set of brushes. Um, it helps to execute the creative art that you're trying to do. You can't do it with your fingers. I do my own makeup with my fingers, <laughs> but I would never do a client's makeup with my fingers. For young women starting out in this industry, what would you say are the essentials they need in their kit coming on the set? Building a kit is a process. It's not an overnight thing. Um, there's so many nationalities. Um, if you're a true artist, then you should be able to work with all nationalities, all skin tones, all skin conditions, and your kit should reflect that. 
What is a cliche about working in makeup that you wish people better understood? A cliche about working in makeup, I find people don't take it seriously. Oh, you're just a makeup artist. <laughs> oh, you, you know, you don't have a BA or a master's in law or doctoring or something like that. But it is a profession. It is a field. You do study. I studied. I went to school. I started at fashion school and switched my career over to makeup, but I had to learn the dynamics of makeup. There's color theory, there's working in television, film, photography, fashion, and I've touched all levels of the industry. I think there's a misconception that being a makeup artist, you have to be fabulous and the best artist and create the best work. And I just want to educate women and men that go into the industry that is way more than just being creative and a good artist. There's personality, there's the ability to speak, there's good energy. Um, you have to have um, good hygiene. You're touching people's face, you're in their personal space and being able to hold a good conversation. And um, there's a level of trust between you and the client because when the client is in your chair, she's comfortable, just like when she's getting her hair done and she reveals a lot of personal information. So you have to be a good confidant. Final question. How can our audience get in touch with you? I'm available on Instagram at Crystallized Artists. Um, I have an email, crystalfosternyc at gmail.com. And my website will be out um, very soon. Learn more about me and my featured story on thebowmaven.com. <laughs>